Hey there, if you don't know me, my name is Maria and I like to make technology videos on the internet. In today's video, I wanted to give you some tips for all the new incoming freshmen or first years who are going into computer science, software engineering, computer engineering, and teach you some of the things that I wish I'd known in my first year and give you some tips for how to be successful in your career as a student, as people say, and how you can do all this stuff online because I know it's gonna be a struggle this year, especially for the new incoming 2020 new students or whatever. But I'm gonna try my best to give you all the advice I can and help you start this school year off on a good note. So let's get started. So the first section I wanted to cover with my advice is how you can succeed in class. Well, I kind of, okay. I had this problem when I entered university for the first time and I was trying to figure out how can I properly take notes in class. So I downloaded some apps, like I forget what I think Evernote and it, I didn't really like it that much. And I guess now what's popular is Notion. So you can use those types of apps or like your iPad or whatever you have to type out notes. But what I found after taking so many computer science courses or math courses is that, well, not math courses, but specifically for computer science type courses where you're learning about theory and things like that, the only thing that's important to take notes about is what your professor says that isn't on the slides because in most courses they'll have slides up or if the teacher doesn't put slides up and they still use a blackboard like some of mine did, then obviously you have to take notes for everything that they write down just in case. But definitely, you need to focus on taking notes about the things that they're saying and asking questions about that. So you have to remain focused the whole entire time during the lecture because you don't want to miss something because once you miss that one thing I found like then you won't understand the rest and then you'll have to go home catch up and that kind of stuff so you have to pay attention don't just focus on being like I have to copy down every single thing that's on the slides because they'll change it in five seconds don't focus on writing those things because most likely they're going to post it online and you can copy those slides later but focus on what they're saying and try to understand what's actually going on in the lecture and ask them questions right away if you don't understand something. Also, another piece of advice for succeeding in class is reaching out to other students for help. So right now, a lot of students will probably use Discord servers or like WhatsApp group chats and that kind of stuff. So they'll make a group chat with their classmates and then they'll all study together or like send each other notes or be like, hey, how did you do that question on this assignment? Like if it's not the marks or whatever, or it's like, hey, I didn't understand what this means and work together on solving things. I think that's really good and that's also another way to make friends or if you already have friends who are in your major then study with them if they're in the same classes as you and that's how you're going to do better in those classes if you have people who you can count on to ask questions for or you can study together and that kind of stuff and also in that case I want to say like don't cheat for those types of things because I've heard that some like TAs sometimes join those chats so be careful about that but don't so don't cheat but also like if it's an assignment or like you're just studying for tests, then definitely work together. Like an assignment, not for marks, like homework questions or something like that. Struggle together and try to figure it out together, not just on your own, because I don't want people who, especially right now during COVID, I don't want you to be like at home worrying and doing all this stuff on your own. Know that there are other people around you who are also struggling and you should work together to try to solve these problems. And in the case of these types of majors, you should understand that most of the work and application is going to be done on your own at home or during lab times. As long as you're doing chemistry labs or something where you're going to be doing coding labs and you need to actually practice your skills. You're not just going to learn theory. Some courses are going to be theory and just like apply that theory in assignments, but most likely, especially in first year, you're going to be learning a bunch of stuff and it's going to be more application based. Another point I want to say about succeeding in class is that you should ask upper year students for shared Google Drives or like the um, drives that have tests, old tests in them and stuff like that. And that was really helpful. Like when I went into my university, I started off in engineering and the engineering upper years, they all compiled a lot of their old tests into a Google Drive and they shared it with the younger students. That was so nice of them. Like I was, I was blown away because I know my friends at other universities, they have to like literally buy old tests from people. And I feel like, yeah, that's pretty sad. Like you should help other students out. And now whenever I see a younger student, I'm always like, oh, do you want like the code to my shared Google Drive? Like, I don't care if they see my test marks, who cares? Like, as long as I'm helping them learn and if they're interested, they can see like, oh, what is this course about? Should I take this course? And last point for succeeding in class is that definitely attend TA office hours or like professor office hours or tutorials and ask your questions there 
because that's going to be their useful time to get to know those people and also see what kind of research they're studying maybe and see if that interests you. Okay, and now I want to cover advice for how you can study for tests in university. Well, my main point of advice for this is that you shouldn't just be reading the textbook and reading the slides. You should go beyond that and take initiative. Go search up videos online about the specific things that you're learning. Look at other universities, like search up the content that you're learning and then you'll see other professor slides from different universities. You could read other books, you could read articles online, like try to not just limit yourself to what you're learning in class. Say you're taking an algorithms course or data structures course, go and learn that stuff on your own as well. Like you might be learning one thing in class, learn more of it outside of class or learn other things related to it, similar things to it, because that's what's gonna actually help you learn and make you more interested in it. And also for reviewing for tests, I found that do not just focus on the lecture slides alone. Like definitely you have to read the textbook. Professors are not going to just take questions that you've already seen before, most likely. They're going to extend beyond your knowledge a little bit. So that's why the, my last point is important to look at other people's information and see what other what other things you can learn. Make sure you review everything because sometimes I'm lazy. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just look at the lecture slides. And then I skip over like a brief chapter in the textbook. And then that thing comes in, comes back and bites me in the butt when I'm taking the test. And I see that and I'm like, oh no, like I didn't remember to read this chapter or like, I didn't think that was important. Like, I thought that was a useless thing, but then there's something like hidden in this chapter that I didn't read. So make sure you go over everything and review all the terminology and stuff like that. Because for me, I have problems. Like, I know computer scientists and like engineers are bad at memorizing things, which is like a character trait we all probably have. But there are a lot of times where it's like the first part of a test is like multiple choice stuff, or it's like, oh, what are, what are the four something something in this language? And I'm like, oh, I don't remember the names and everything. So review those things because they might be app. And if you lose a bunch of marks on that, then that's pretty sad. Okay, now I wanted to move into advice for how you should work on your assignments as a major like in the computer science realm. So I wanted to say that you should make sure that you leave enough time for you to do your assignments. Once I entered university, I started to procrastinate and in general, procrastination isn't bad. Like there, I, there was this one TED talk that I watched that was actually saying why procrastination is good. Because if you leave it in your head for long enough, then it allows you to ruminate over things and think about the idea. So it's like, you're not technically procrastinating, you're thinking about something in the back of your mind. It's like, if I see a problem and I just read the problem, but I don't actually do it, then I think about it for a few hours and then I'm like, oh, now I have an idea that I can go back to it. But don't leave it for like weeks and then don't do it until a few days that it's due, like before it's due because then you're just going to stress yourself out so much and then you're just going to be scrambling to get it done. Give yourself enough time and just like in the real world, you need buffer time. Like whenever I develop something at my workplace or on my own, I have to give myself an extra few weeks because you need a few, a few weeks for debugging. Well, in the case of an assignment, give yourself a few days. Like try to finish the assignment a few days ahead and then you can make it better because I don't want you to hand in something that you're not proud of. And also, okay, if your assignment has to be a group assignment, try to find a really good partner who is like the same level as you or like you can you can build each other up. Like don't get someone who's going to be lazy. Like find someone who's going to do at least 50% of the work. And be careful about those courses where you have to do humongous group assignments, like up to five people or something. Because when I took my psychology course, one of the things I learned was that studies have shown that when you have more and more people in a group, the less things people will actually do, like you'll feel like you can slack off. And then it just goes to one or two people who have to solve the problems and do stuff, which I am guilty of doing in my operating systems class. So I'm sorry to my friends who are in my group. I know you might be scared about doing this and failing, like going to hackathons or coding contests, but you should be okay with failing because that's just life and that's just what programming is about. You all probably went into programming thinking that it's challenging and it's fun. So why don't you take a chance and take more on more challenges and don't be afraid of failing. Like in my first year, my goal was to fail as much as possible. That was literally my, first, my goal. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go to as much events as possible. I'm going to join these coding clubs. I'm going to join all these random things and just see what happens because I'm in first year and it's fine if I fail. If I'm in like fourth year, I'm in my master's degree program, people are going to be like, oh, she's, she should be smart already. She should not fail at things. When I'm in first year, people are just amazed that I actually showed up to these things and I like talked to people, networked and 
like actually tried. Like I went to like design competitions, I went to engineering competitions, coding contests, like everything. Even though sometimes I failed, sometimes I did well surprisingly. I learned so much, I met so many cool people and that was really great. And I even though I failed a lot of the time, I'm just like, that was like some of the best experiences I had in university were because I just put myself out there. Another main point is that if you're in a programming type major, at least join one club that's related to coding. In my case, I joined way too many coding clubs in my first semester and that kind of like stressed me out because I was learning like many different languages and plus I had classes. So I was like, okay, for my advice for you is to just choose one club or maybe two like, or attend their first meeting, see what they do, what they're doing and then decide, okay, which club do you want to actually participate in and actually put your time into. Join at least one other club that's not related to coding because I had this mentor in my first year and she was telling me like, yeah, Maria, why are you being part of so many coding clubs? You code at school, you code at work, you code after school and work. It's too much. Like you need to relax and take a break. I was like, oh yeah, you're right. Like I'm going to burn out soon if I keep doing this. So I dropped those coding clubs I didn't want to be in or like I couldn't spare my time to be in them. Like they're still fun, but it just wasn't for the right time for me. And then this last year I joined the fencing club. Not even, it's not even a team, it's a club at my school because my friends are in it and it's been so much fun. I've never done a sport before, but it's really fun. This year I'm excited to join other clubs and organizations at my school. So I'm gonna try out different things and not just focus my whole life on coding, of course. And on a related note, I wanted to give you some advice of how you can make friends in university. Since we're online, it's not like you can just sit in class and just become friends with someone sitting beside you. You might have to like see their names in a Zoom call or Microsoft Teams call or whatever and message them online or join those group chats like I mentioned before and ask people questions and eventually you might become friends. And also try to just be friendly to everyone you meet. Try to open yourself up, smile, be a nice person and people will generally want to talk to you and also be a good listener. That's what I've learned. Like everyone is going to be better than me at something. So why not find out what that something is and actually listen to them and figure out what they're passionate about and see if they can teach me that thing or if I can learn more about it and just open my mind to new ideas. And also when making friends, try to think about finding your circle. Like I know you're coming maybe from high school or from another degree or just from the workforce, but also in university, trying to find your circle of friends that you can count on, even like different backgrounds and similar, but similar passion for programming and for learning. You will have like the most fun experiences because I'm so glad that I have made such great friends in my major and that we've stuck together for so long. And hopefully after we graduate, we'll definitely like, hopefully, hopefully still stick together. They've helped me along the way. They helped me become the person I want to be and they're pushing me a lot. So I think that's the biggest thing that university offers is making friends who have the same passions as you. Okay, and finally to finish off, I just wanted to give some general university college advice for people studying this type of major. My first point is that you need to get to know your academic calendar really, really well. And by that, I don't even know what it's called at other universities, but it's basically like what courses you need to take to graduate. Get to know that very, very well, because if you don't, then you're gonna miss something. And at my university, some things are messed up, you know? So some of them, they have like a list. They're like, yeah, you can take courses from this list. And I'm like, those courses don't even exist anymore. And they're like, yeah, sucks for you, basically. <laughs> so you have to make sure that that doesn't happen. Or like some people, they take a course, they're like, they think it counts as something, and then it doesn't end up counting. And they're like, why, why the F did I spend so much money on this? So be careful about that. And also the major reason why I'm saying this is because by the time you get to your third year of university, like first year, second year, it's mainly you have to take required courses. Third year and fourth year is when you get to finally choose courses that you're interested in taking. And that's where you get to branch out. So you can decide to take cool courses like intro to cybersecurity or machine learning and that kind of stuff. You need to know what the prerequisites of those are because I know, I think for computer vision, the prerequisite is linear algebra. And I personally have taken linear algebra but some people I know have not. So they need to make sure that they take linear algebra if they want to take that course. Try to think about like, now that I've taken a few other courses, now what, are, what do I think I'm interested in? It changes over time, but you have to think about that. Don't just go in blindly and be like, yeah, I'll sign up for whatever. Like make a plan a little bit. And also another thing that I mentioned in another video is that you should try to figure out what your professors are researching because that would be really cool to see if you can help them out on a research project. And that's what I want to try doing this year more so because I haven't. And that's bad, bad on me. But I, you don't have to do that in your first year, but definitely try it out and see 
what you might be interested in because you can obviously like pick their brains and ask them questions during their office hours. And also what I wanted to mention is that in a four year university degree, I have heard this a lot from every major in general, like biology, chemistry, math, whatever. They've all said, first year is easy. Second year is hell. Third year is okay. Fourth year is easy. 100% agree. First year is super easy. Second year, horrible. What happens in, at least in some schools that I know, you learn high level programming languages in first year because first year is going to be a review of high school if you've done coding in high school it's going to be like an intro because people don't expect you to know coding going into university most likely so first year high level programming languages like java python whatever second year is going to drop to low level programming languages and that's where things get crazy <laughs> and that's where everyone starts crying so that's what happens in computer science and engineering, like software, computer stuff. So that's what I wanted to say about coding type majors. I want you to remember that your first year of university or college is going to be a review, but it's also could be a lot of new stuff. And I want you to focus on those things. I know I mentioned a lot of stuff like joining clubs and everything, but that should not take away from you learning and you trying your best in class because your first year is going to be your foundational knowledge for everything else that you're going to learn. So you need to make sure that you're learning your classes and all like your coding type things to the best of your ability because you're going to need it later on. And I wish you good luck. And I, if you have any questions or other advice, then please leave it below in the comments. Like this video if you like the video and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And in the future, I hope to teach more things maybe about Git or databases, data structures. I'd love to do that. And if you let me know some ideas that you have for that kind of stuff or things you want me to teach you, then let me know about that too. And thanks for listening. Bye.